What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It is tag time. We're glad to be able to get back with you this week so we can share a message that God has for us as we get ready to close out this month of love and get into the third month of 2021. We're already to the third month of 2021 and just a week from now, actually tomorrow. Tomorrow will be March 1st. So, uh, well, from when uh, this will be airing. So glad that you're here. The year is going by fast. I hope that you are enjoying yourself and I do appreciate you stopping by watching this video and listening so that we can hear God's word and find out more about what he has for us. So today we're going to get into that. But first, before I do that, so I don't forget, uh, I want you to not forget to sign up for the few updates. I don't send them out a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to try and do more and do better, actually. But I want you to be on that list so that you can just get an occasional encouragement, a hello, a what's up from me. And we'll also send you the link to the video so that you don't have to remember or go search for it on YouTube. You can look for it on YouTube. It's also in our church app, which you can have and download. But if you want to be on the list, just send the word tag, T-A-G-G, which is the name of our youth ministry, tag youth ministry, to uh, 713-903-8533. Hopefully it's down there. You can see that. Check it out. Just send the word tag. You'll be added to the list. I'll send out just a few text messages throughout the week, seeing how you're doing, encouraging you in your walk with Christ. Again, can't wait to see more of you all's faces when we're in person on Sundays. If you get a chance, come on out. This week, God has, has a message for us to talk about concerning creation. We're going to talk about creation. We're going to talk about the beginning of the world. We're going to talk about like the beginning of mankind. And it's something I haven't talked about for a while. I don't know what you know or what you think or what you believe about creation. But the same way that we try to look at all the different things that are in the world, all the different things that are part of our life and our culture, and we're trying to find out how do we engage that as believers and as Christians, well, we want to take a look at creation today. Do you know the creation story? Do you know how we all got here and how this all got here? I hope so. But if not, you're in the right place. We're going to find out today. So if you have your Bible, you can get that ready. You can use a device for your, your Bible now since we're not in person. We don't do that in person, but since we're not in person, uh, you can use your device. You can have a paper Bible. Of course, we always encourage that. Uh, and we're going to look at some scriptures and find out a little bit more about the creation or about the world that we live in, the universe that we're in and that we're a part of. And I uh, just want to see, you know, wh what do we do? How do we live in this world? as believers. And there are some very important things that we need to get straight and have in our minds. First thing I want to do, uh, first thing I want to look at is in Acts chapter 17. Acts 1, 7, Acts 17 is where we're going to start out. So flip, turn, swipe, tap over there. And we're going to look at a few verses uh, in Acts chapter 17 to kind of set up uh, our looking at creation, how we all got here. This is going to be a two-parter for sure, possibly three, but I think it's just going to be two. We'll see how it goes, and we'll just go from there. So in Acts chapter 17, I want to start down in verse number 26. Now, this is uh, where we as people find ourselves. You know, sometimes people say that, uh, that you're Christian or I'm a Christian because we were born in the United States. The United States is a Christian nation. Yes, it is. And that doesn't mean that every person in the United States is a Christian. It doesn't mean that everybody has to be or even is supposed to be. It's just how our system and our laws work. And some people believe that they're going to be a religion based on whatever country they grew up in or whatever, part, uh, whatever belief system their family is a part of. Well, it doesn't really matter where you were born or, or what your family believes. God wants all of us, all people, to accept him as Lord and Savior. And so we're supposed to do that. But you might ask, well, how do we get to know God? How is it that we came to this place? There's probably going to be a time in your life where you have to sit back and really think about what you believe and why you believe it. A lot of people who grow up in church, things happen and they get away from church in their younger years. There's a lot of people that don't uh, go to church or know anything about church at all when they're younger, but they grow up and they find God or they get saved and they accept salvation. And then their lives are from that point forward, live the way that they believe God has for them to live. 
Uh, there are some people that start out different ways and end up another way and all kind of different stories. But there's a point in our lives where we have to decide, is this something that I believe? Is this something that I accept? Ex- especially if you're in the place where you've grown up in the church, if you're uh, going to church because that's what your parents uh, you know, instruct you to do, tell you to do, make you do, which is what a good pr- Christian parent is supposed to do. You got to ask yourself at some point, is this what I believe? Why do I believe it? How do I get to this place? We're going to start out looking at that and how that ties into creation in verse number 26. And this is talking about God. It's very important for us to get this in our minds and understand it, especially today, especially in 2021 uh, with the, the things that are going on in our culture. Not to get off on that. I hope you will have ears to hear. Let's look at verse number 26. We'll start there. It says in the King James, and hath made one blood, made of one blood, all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their inhabitation or excuse me, the bounds of their habitation. 27 says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move, and have our being, as certain also of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So a couple things to point out. We look back at verse number 27. He says that people, humans, are supposed to seek after the Lord. We're supposed to look after the Lord. You know what seek is. You know what hide and go seek, right? We would count off. We would close our eyes and Our friends would scramble and they would go this way and that way and we would go seek them, right? We're looking for them. We're trying to find them. We don't know exactly where they are, but we're trying to get to them. And God, through his word, tells us that he wants us to seek after him. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. But it also says in verse number 27 that he's not far from us. So God is wanting us to seek him. He wants us to find him so he's not far away from us. But he wants us to seek and and reach out so that some way we can find him. So God wants to be found. God wants to be understood. But he is a gracious God, a loving God. He allows us to seek if we want to seek. And you've kind of seeked or at least your parents have set you up in the place and position where you've been introduced to God and you have an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior, should you wish. So it says that we might feel after him, we're looking for him, and we're going to find him. I want to talk about creation and the fact that creation is one of the ways that we're supposed to find God and that we're supposed to find out who God is. Let's go over to Romans, also in the New Testament. All right, it's the next book over. So if you you swipe pages, turn the pages toward the left. It's going to be the next book over. If you don't know exactly where it is, you can also always go to your table of contents so that you can find where we are in the Bible. All right. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 20 here. And again, we're talking about creation. So what do I mean when I say creation? Well, creation is actually what we, the word we use when we talk about the making of the earth, the universe, the solar system, and all the people that are on the earth. Now I know you are probably taught that there is another beginning to the existence of man. I'm sure you were at least taught at school or in some place uh, that there wasn't a creation event but that there was something else that happened. Well, we as believers, as Christians, because of what the Bible says, we believe that the world was created by God. We believe that the earth, the solar system, all the stuff in it, and we're going to talk about some of it specifically in part two. But today I just want to say in general or talk about it in general and realize that the earth, the world is God's creation. We people are God's creation. We're not just here because of some accident. We're not just here because of some happenstance or something like that. This place was created. This world was created and it was created for you and it was created for me. Let's look in uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 20. tells us something very interesting. 
It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Let's read that again because it sounded kind of confusing. I'm not sure if I heard what I think I just heard. It says in verse 20, For the invisible things of him, talking about God, the invisible, that means things that can't be seen, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So he's saying that there are invisible things that are visible. Goes on to say, uh, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. Well, what does that mean? What, how, do, how do I see the things that are unseen? How do I know what it is? Well, it says, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So the invisible things about God that we're to know and understand because of the word of God, because of the Bible, are actually proved and shown to us by the existence of the world. So there are things that we have to believe by faith. We have to uh, see what it says in the Bible, and we just have to believe that it's true. That's faith. But our faith is not a blind faith completely. Yes, we walk by faith and not by sight, but God gives us things to help our faith. And the world's existence, the existence of creation, the mere fact that we have an earth, a globe, a universe, all these things that are a part of our world speak to us about God's greatness and who he is and the fact that he made this place. Now, there are some people that don't believe that this world was created. But if you think about all the intricate things about our world, it, that, to me, that's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe that the world was not created. I mean, if you take the position of the earth, we're just close enough to the earth to get warmth and heat, but just far enough from the sun, excuse me, the earth is just close enough to the sun so that we can get heat and we get a lot of heat down here, right? Just close enough to get heat, but just far away not to burn up and melt. If this planet that we reside on was a little bit closer to the sun, if we were the second rock from the sun, our life would not be able to exist. If this rock was further from the sun, we wouldn't exist. We'd be too cold. We would freeze up and the, the life forms on earth would die. So we're in a very specific place. And then if you look at the water and how animals and how life is, is conceived and then birthed and how all these things constantly work together. The fact that we breathe in one gas and breathe out a different gas. And then if you add to that, the fact that the, the trees and the plants, they breathe in what we breathe out and they put out what we breathe in. All these different systems the mountain ranges, the oceans, the deserts, all the animals. I mean, creation is so vast that they're still finding new species of animals. Like we don't know all the animals that exist in 2021. Don't, you know, don't tell me that this was an accident. Don't tell me that this is something that just happened so to be because of things that are not explained. No, I believe with every ounce, every cell in my body, that this was created, and that's why we call it creation. So next time when we get together, we're gonna to talk about the fact uh, that God created the world, and we're gonna look at what the Bible tells us about that process. But God gives us all this world around us, all this nature is what we call it. Nature was created by God. We have nature, we call it mother nature, we call it the great outdoors. Are you ever able to enjoy the great outdoors? Do you ever think about the world that's around us? You know, God didn't make these buildings, but he gave us all the things that we need to make these buildings. So when we think about creation, I want you to understand that this is God's creation. You know, we have a saying in Texas, and that saying is don't mess with Texas. Now I thought that was kind of cool, you know, when I first got here, but I came to find out that that meant that you're not supposed to litter. You're not supposed to throw trash on the ground. Well, if you think about it as a believer, no. We are supposed to take care of creation as believers. And as Christians, God has put us here to take care of it. 
So uh, I'm gonna get ready to close it off. We might have to push this into three parts, but this is a big deal. I, I don't know, again, I wanna talk to some of you all about what you've heard about the, the, the beginning of the world, the beginning of time and things like that. But I want you to know and have in your mind that this is God's creation. It's something that he made, something that he formed, and he put us here on purpose. So next week, we'll talk about a few things that we're supposed to do with or within this creation. And then we'll talk about how creation was formed. It's very important. Please make sure that you're here next week. Before you go, if we look at Genesis chapter 2, 15, really quick, just give me like one more minute. If you need to pause the video and go to the bathroom, it's okay because, you know, it's online. So in Genesis chapter 2, 15, the Bible says God took the man that he had created, which we'll see next week, took the man, put him in the garden, excuse me, put him in the garden of Eden to dress it, to keep it. Man was made to dress and keep the garden, or that means man was made to take care of the earth. That's the reason that we need to cut the trees. If you look at a place that has not been taken care of, that place will be overrun. There are some people that, that believe that man only has a negative effect on nature, but that's not true. If man is not here, nature will just be overgrown, be all over the place. Uh, you know, things won't be well and good. That's why man is here. We're here so that we can make sure that nature stays okay. Now that means that we are supposed to cut down trees when they need to be cut down, but we're not supposed to cut down all the trees. That means we're supposed to take care of the outdoors and things like that, but we're not supposed to uh, concrete, cement, pave everything in the world. You know, hunting as a, has a very important uh, purpose in our ecological system. Because if we don't hunt certain animals, animals get out of population all the time. Like there is a, a wild pig almost epidemic throughout Texas and throughout some of the southern states because there are too many pigs. And so we have to make sure that we keep those numbers in line. There were uh, like in Yellowstone Park, they took all the wolves out and then the deer population grew up too big and it was too crazy and they were eating all the food and the grass and stuff. They had to bring some wolves back in so that they could get the ecology of that park to be in the way that it was supposed to be. Otherwise, nature left to itself will ruin itself. So we're here to dress and keep, to take care of God's creation. Look at this earth, this planet, our solar system is God's creation. That's it, my friends. That's all I have for you. Went a couple minutes long. I hope it's okay. Tag, you're it.